All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily Afre. I'm the education specialist from the Frost Art Museum here at FIU, and I welcome you to our zine workshop, a virtual zine workshop, uh, focusing on the first gen experience, right? So the first generation experience as a college student here in the United States. Now with me today, we actually have invited uh, FIU's very own first gen students. We have Amaris Cruz, we have Claudia Hernandez, and we also have Andres Camacho. So welcome, thank you for being a part of today's Zine Workshop. And uh, I would like you to uh, mention what your major is, uh, the year that you expect to graduate, and um, just a little bit about your uh, family background before we get into the exhibition and the actual zine making. So Amaris, uh, you can take it away. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amaris Cruz, and I'm an art, art history, and religious studies major and I'm graduating this semester. Uh, my mom is from Nicaragua and my dad is from Puerto Rico. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Claudia, um, tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin. Hi everyone. I'm Claudia. I'm an international student from Lima, Peru. So my family, everyone is Peruvian. I'm a prac major with a minor in marketing and um, I'm going to graduate, hopefully, summer next year, but probably it will be fall. Cool. Thank you. And finally, Andres. Hello, everyone. My name is Andres Camacho. Just like Claudia mentioned, I am a PRAC major, so Public Relations, Advertising, and Applied Communications. And I am expected to graduate next spring, so spring 2021. And um, both of my parents are from Mexico, but specifically, they're from Guanajuato. And they've been in the U.S. for over 20 years. Cool. All right. So for every single exhibition that we have, we typically have a student driven um, program. Uh, typically, we have our zine workshop. Now, this exhibition uh, that we're inspired by today is called Otros Lados. And it features the work of three Mexican American artists from three different generations. Uh, Hugo Crosswave, Judith Hernandez and Itzel Basualdo. Now, uh, this exhibition is actually in conjunction with the Freshman Year Experience course, a common reading book program. And the book this semester is actually titled A Dream Called Home, a memoir by Reina Grande. Now, Reina Grande also happened to have been a first generation college student. And through the book and the exhibition, we are exploring themes of immigration, identity, and race. And of course, uh, what your college uh, journey has been like, right? Uh, so, um, a zine, you're probably wondering what that is if you've never heard that before. Uh, it's short for magazine. It's a self-made publication uh, that essentially can be made collage style. So uh, using uh, cut and paste methods uh, with magazines, newspapers, etc. Right. And it's all about this integration of text and image. So today we are going to make our own zine. Um, now, the cool thing about zines are that they're inspired by different themes. Right. So we're going to be inspired by the themes that I just mentioned, um, immigration, identity, race, and your first generation experience and or college story. Uh, so Carmen, our events manager, actually just posted a link uh, to our exhibition navigation video. So although, um, well, actually we are open. So you can visit the museum uh, Wednesday through Saturday uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. But if you'd like to visit virtually, you can do so by checking out that link. We have a 3D navigation video of our exhibition for you to peruse. So uh, thank you for adding that link to the chat. Cool. So I guess let's get started. Um, now, you are going to need a couple of materials. So you're going to need some paper, anything to write with. It could be pens, paper, um, sorry, pens, markers, pencils, anything of that sort, a pair of scissors right? And a glue stick. Now you're also going to need magazines, newspapers, or images that you've already either scanned and printed or um, collected, you know, photographs from your own phone. So once you have all of your materials set out, uh, which you probably do because you signed up for this program, um, we can get started with learning how to either fold your zine out of one large sheet of paper or using a stapler or a hole puncher to put your uh, pages together. Okay, so really quickly, I'm going to show you guys how to fold your zine with a large sheet. Now, this is a really great activity too, if uh, 
you know, you're a teacher and you want to do something inspiring with your kids, um, depending on what you're learning for the day, it works with any uh, topic. So sometimes we'll do things on uh, feminism or sexuality or um, like today, immigration, right? So you wanna take your large sheet of paper and you're going to fold it in half three times. So we're gonna fold it once and make sure you crease that down pretty well. You're gonna fold it a second time. And you're gonna fold it one more time down the middle. And then if you get lost in this process or decide to just reference it later, um, we'll have a link in the chat to a previous video on how to make a zine from our YouTube. So you can check that out when you can, okay? So now when you open up your sheet of paper, you should have eight different sections, okay? If you're using a large sheet, remember. This is if you're using one sheet to fold into your booklet. Then what you wanna do is fold it lengthwise or veggie hot dog style. And you're going to crease that down, okay? just to make sure that your pages will be defined later on. Now, you're gonna fold your paper in half, and you are going to cut the folded part, okay, down the middle, but halfway, so not all the way, right? So then when you open up your sheet of paper, you should have this slit down the middle. Now fold it lengthwise one more time. And you're going to take the edges of your sheet of paper and fold inwards just like this. Can everybody see that? It's kind of hard to tell, but you're gonna take the ends, right? Crease that down one more time. And then fold in half once more. So you'll end up getting your own booklet, right? With little pages without needing to, um, to staple it or use a hole puncher and some string to bind it together. But the cool thing about zines is that you can do it however you like. So you don't have to really worry about uh, this on, on, unless you have you know, those materials with you. So I've already started an example, okay? Now, this is called El Sueño, right? It's inspired by Otros Lados. Um, in Otros Lados, one of the artists, Judith Hernandez, she actually uses uh, Loteria cards um, in her work. So Loteria is a popular Mexican game of chance. So I took that as inspiration to get my zine started. Now a really um, easy way to do this is to use um, printed paper, right? Or um, pages from a magazine that offer a lot of texture, right? And you can use that to, uh, uh, as a foundation to layer your pages and then cut out images, right? Cut out different words that you can piece together to create phrases or song lyrics, right? Um, anything that you want to use to include into your zine, uh, the options are, um, you know, endless. And so I encourage you to start doing that now while reflecting upon um, these themes of your first generation experience and or college story, right? Um, your own identity, whether it relates to your cultural identity or um, your personal history, your personal memory, right? And um, we'll be discussing some questions with our panelists about their own first generation experiences. So yeah, let's get started. Um, have you always dreamed about going to college? So you can just hop in, anyone, and then I'll, we'll get um, everyone a chance to, to discuss that. I can go first. Yes, I'm a nerd. I consider myself a proud nerd and I've always dreamed about college. It's what excited me more in Peru. And I was also in a British high school in Lima, which is the capital. So they prepared us to leave the country. It was not really to stay studying there. So I always had this vision of leaving it and I knew that could only happen if I went to college. So yeah, I've always dreamed about college. 
Cool. Now, in Peru, did a lot of um, other students talk about uh, leaving to the United States um, to go to college? Yes. It was, even though it was a British high school, it was kind of weird because everyone wanted to go to the United States. No one really wanted <laughs> to go to England. So, yeah, it, definitely I have a lot of friends that are in different parts of the United States also studying after high school. And a lot of them also stayed in Peru, but with plan, like they're planning to leave for their masters or they want to work in Peru and then leave to work outside of Peru. Okay, okay, like get some professional training before and then, you know, leave when they can save up money, maybe, you know, they're a little bit older, so they have more experience in the real world, right? Yeah. Exactly, which is like, for me, it's kind of the opposite. I want to get my education, like the best education I can outside of it. And then with the resources and knowledge that I have, go back and give back to the country that has given me so much. Wow, that's awesome, cool. Um, what about you, Andres? Have you always dreamt about going to college? <laughs> so actually my journey to want to go to college, like I would say started in second grade. Uh, my father was actually deported back in, what, let's say 2008. I think I was, um, I was actually in second grade and we actually had the choice of either staying here in America or either moving back to Mexico, which was where my dad was deported to. So we actually took the leap of faith. My mom was like, hey, we're going to go back. I didn't know what to expect. And when I got there, it was, yes, a culture shock. Um, I saw kids that were living in poverty. I didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if I was going to come back to the United States. But then that's when I knew for, like, instantly, like, education has opened so many doors. And I knew I would be granted so many opportunities. And it's literally the only way I would be able to give back to my community. And also people living back in Mexico that, like, have no opportunity to them so I saw like the clashes of no opportunities opportunities and I think that was like impactful for me to see and to explore colleges and to get to meet new people so that's how it started that's pretty cool that you're also from Mexico just like you know the books that we're discussing um in the expo well, through the exhibition and the artists that we're featuring um it's crazy that at some and great you know you had to kind of already start thinking about that because of what was happening with your family so it kind of opens your eyes right to the realities of the world even when you're so young um but cool cool and what about you amaris so i feel like um i knew i had to go to college it was always something that uh, my parents mentioned um was like something i couldn't just ignore but the thing is that I was always really scared I wouldn't be able to get into college. I wasn't really good in school growing up. I struggled a lot. And I didn't actually um, start doing well until I was in high school, like towards the end of high school. So I wanted to go to college, but um, I struggled a lot with like my subjects, um, especially since my parents were never around to really be able to teach me things in, um, in school. So, it was always a, a bit of a struggle at first. And then um, once I finally, once I finally um, was able to catch up and get better grades, I was like, okay, this is a, I think I'm, I'll be able to do this. Yeah, so it's like a, a learning process for you, like on your own. Right. So then that actually goes into our next question. How would you guys explain how your college application process um, was? Like, how did you prepare yourself for your college journey? Well, for me, um, it was really difficult um, trying to like get all the papers, trying to get information from my parents. Um, I struggled a lot. I like I definitely took a long time to complete paperwork, and um, and I felt really bad because my my parents also felt bad that they weren't really able to help me, and I had to kind of figure out how to do these things by myself. But um, you know, I was able to do it. And I ended up being able to help my sister when it was time for her to apply as well, my younger sister. That's good because, you know, uh, you recognize that you didn't have that, you know, so to be able to be that person for your sister. And I get that because I also have younger sisters. Mm -hmm. um, so cool, cool. Well, for me, I actually, before coming to FIU, I was at Miami-Dade College where I got my associate. And thanks to the mentors I met there, 
they're the ones that helped me with the entire process to apply to FIU. And then here, the Honors College also helped me so much in getting everything ready. And yeah, for me, it was, I was kind of lost and super worried. But once I started the process and I saw that people here actually wanted to help, um, I felt super like more tranquil and more confident as well. So in my case, I'm actually a transfer student from MDC. But um, back in high school, I actually got involved with a program called the Mexican American Council. So basically, they take in high school students. And it's basically like a mentorship for all students um, that fall under their categories. So basically, we're all first generations. We mostly have um, farm worker backgrounds. And actually, they were able to mentor me and guide me like through the whole process because it, it was pretty scary knowing my mom didn't have a social, so it was like, um, what do I do? Like, you don't have this. Other people have this. You don't. So, like, it was conflicting, but I was able to get guidance through them. And it's actually where um, I'm working at right now. So I was able to, like, teach the same things that I've learned through the program to them. And we're, like, related. Um, we have, like, the same background, same issues. So it's something that I've been able to give back, but I learned through them a lot. And how did you find out about that program? Was it an advisor in your high school that told you about it? Or um, did you just do a Google search? How was it that it was, that came um, up? It was pretty crazy because um, they were actually offering, um, it's a spring break program for, um, to go to the NASA and the Kennedy Space Center. Oh, okay. And I didn't get selected, but my friend got selected. And then we started asking more questions. And then that's when the program got brought into my high school, which is located down in Florida City, like 30 minutes away from FIU. And um, they were like, hey, we're taking in students. And then the cool thing about the program was once you're done, you can get like a two or four year scholarship, which is like pretty amazing knowing that, hey, I don't have to worry about this cost or expenses that come with college. Wow. That's awesome. Like, I think also, too, with what's interesting, what I'm also within, you know, the age range that you guys are at. I'm turning 25 soon. And it's like, um, with us, you know, uh, the period of, of us being in high school and then going into college, the internet is obviously such a huge resource, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so even if you may not have people around you, you know, you guys were, you know, lucky enough to either talk to an advisor or maybe even do it on your own, um, but the internet, um, it's really something that a lot of people really use to their advantage to look for opportunity, right? So, so that's cool. <laughs> awesome. So I, that brings us to our next question. Um, how do you, uh, like, how do you feel being as a first generation student um, that that has affected uh, your choice of career path? Like, um, did it really change what you wanted to study? Um, how did your parents uh, support that or feel about that decision so either of you can take a crack at that so i'll start off um so i actually wanted to be a dentist i was ready to start my bio major i was on track but then i took an intro to marketing class and also an intro to public relations class and i was like starstruck i was like this is what i want to do i love this like social media writing press releases like this was something that i was like literally passionate about and as I like progressed with like bio, it was like the first semester I was like, yeah, this is not gonna happen. So that's <laughs> when I instantly changed. And I told my parents like, hey, I won't be doing um, bio. I don't wanna be a dentist anymore. So they were pretty shocked because it's always been embedded like in my culture. Well, let's say like my household basically. Like, hey, we want you to be a doctor. We want you to be a lawyer. We want you to be something like, it's not expected to go into the field of communications. Mm -hmm. with my family because we have like a lot of biologists um chemists all that stuff dentists um so i think they were expecting me to take on the role of hey you'll be the first um doctor in america basically for our family um they were pretty shocked i guess they are now like cool with it because they know i'm passionate about this and this is something that i actually love but it was pretty um crazy to see how they were before and now before they were like okay why questioning me like are you sure and i was always like yeah i'm positive but now they're like yeah do what you do we're happy we support you and we're always going to be there for you good yeah i mean it's it's funny because usually like 
um, families that, that are relying on, on careers that are going to generate a higher income are typically going to suggest like doctor, lawyer, you know, et cetera. Um, and then after they start seeing, you know, your progress and what you're actually interested in, they start to change, you know, and they, they realize like, okay, cool. There's actual value in this too, you know? Um, and it's, it's also really crazy to think that when you're 17, 18 years old and you know, you're being told that you have to choose one specific profession that is going to dictate the path for your rest of your life, you know, and um, sometimes you just have to try things out and see what works for you and what doesn't. And um, along the way, you'll still be able to carry what you learned from those previous experiences into the next ones that you have, right? So um, cool. What about uh, you, Claudia and uh, Amaris? You can go first. <laughs> um, well, my parents were very supportive from the beginning, um, surprisingly, because I had a lot of friends who were also, um, we, we went to like an art magnet school and I had a lot of friends who were in the same art program and their parents um, didn't let them continue with art. They said that they had to do something else that would uh, generate uh, income in the future. And my parents were very um, supportive. And I guess it's because um, my parents didn't go to college. And my mom, when she came from Nicaragua, she came um, younger than I was, like around, she was probably 16 years old. And she didn't get to finish high school. Um, and she just started to work. Um, so she knew what it was to have to do something, you know, that maybe she um, she didn't want to do when she was growing up. And um, she didn't, she wanted me to do something that I was passionate about. Um, and it's a, it was, it's amazing, but it's also uh, scary because it's a lot of pressure. You know, they, they want you to do something that you love, but at the same time, they don't want you to go through the things that they had to go through. Um, so it is a big leap of faith, uh, yeah. That's a really excellent point because I feel like, um, I guess like advice at that point can stem from both fear and support, right? And that's something that is difficult to navigate, especially as an emerging like, you know, professional or young adult even, you know, because um, there's a lot of like feelings that are tied to this, this experience, um, you know, not just becoming a college student, but also um, doing so as a first generation student. Um, so Claudia, uh, what about you? Yeah, for me as well, my parents were always super supportive, which I truly am thankful for. But I actually did change my majors also because of all this pressure that I had surrounded me, surrounding me, sorry, of having to be better or having this like major income, like everything to be worth it. Because I'm also international. So it was, it's obviously a lot of money for an international student to be able to study here. So I want to be able to give back and if my kids or you know you, like my I have a little sister for 10 years old I want her to be able to have all these opportunities without the financial burden mm -hmm. that sometimes my family had to go through so at first I wanted to study literature because I love writing and just studying literature for me was amazing but everyone kept telling me like you know that's not really a career that like it's not worth going to an, like United States studying because you're not really gonna get something like really big out of it. I was super disappointed and you know, I, but then I started investigating more and I did my associates in communications at MDC, which is where I found my passion for communications. And apart from writing, which we also have to do a lot of writing, I also find my passion for public speaking and you know, all these other like social media and all these other things that can relate to writing, but are not specifically writing and will give me much more opportunities. And now I'm really glad because that has brought me so many experiences that I would have probably not be able to experience if I wouldn't have had that pressure of, you know, not just considering my first option just because I like it, but exploring more. Yeah, and I mean, that's definitely ex exploring and experimenting and just taking the risk to um, search for opportunities, whether they're internships, whether it's a conversation with a mentor that you could have, or advisors, or even just fellow, you know, 
peers, whether they're first generation students or not, um, is definitely um, is beneficial right throughout this process. Cool. Um, I'd like to take this um, moment to um, mention that you need a title for your zine. I totally forgot to state that earlier. Um, zines have a title because that's meant to encompass, you know, the theme of your zine. And so whether it comes at the beginning, middle, or the end of your process, make sure that you have one. All right. So you can uh, be thinking about that as we continue uh, the conversation. So what expectations do you have for yourself as a first gen student? A lot. <laughs> I think that Amaris and Andres can agree on that. I think we have all the families watching and apart from family, friends, and everyone that has supported us along the way have this pressure on us. Like I even get pressure of, I am in a scholarship right now from the Honors College. And I even get pressure for myself about like giving back to the donor that, you know, gave me that scholarship. So I think the expectation is super big, but at least for me, it's what pushes me more. Like, it's not longer about me and just graduating and having the title. It's more of like everyone that has supported me along the way mm -hmm. and also making myself proud because I know everything that we've had to experience as first gen and all the complication and all the like feeling lost and sometimes loneliness. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be worth it at the end. So that expectation just makes me want to obtain and do my best, like, you know, for that degree. Yeah, like to serve, like to have those expectations serve as motivation is what you're saying. Cool. What about you, Andres? So my expectations would be to give back to my community. So I've been offered like so many opportunities. I've been in different programs that were um, publicly funded. So I think the my personal way of like giving back, I ultimately want to start a scholarship fund for people like wanting to go into the field of communications because we really don't have many people that are Latin or like if you see the top agencies, you don't see much diversity. So I really want to give back to my community. And one way would be to have like my own scholarship fund to provide them opportunities, just like I was um, provided opportunities by the community. Wow, that's awesome. You know, it's funny because, you know, I, I know that Claudia has also mentioned this idea of giving back, not only to, you know, I, the country that you're from, or just to to the programs, you know, that have benefited you. That's really interesting to think that that would be like a goal. You know, it just it shows just how grateful you are to have had those opportunities. And you know, this is also to encourage uh, those of you who are attending um, this workshop and that uh, might be in a space where you're looking for opportunities. They're out there. You know, everybody always says apply to the scholarships, apply to grants. You know, apply to programs. Even if you feel like you might not be qualified or that you don't stand a chance, you do, right? You just take the risk. Um, if other people have the ability to acquire that opportunity, why can't you? So that's really the mentality that you always have to have when going into anything that you do with your life, right? So, um, Amaris, <laughs> uh, you haven't answered this question yet, have you? No. Okay, perfect. So um, what expectations do you have for yourself as a first-gen student? I feel like there's there's like this really strong notion, at least in the in the Latinx community, about having to like escape, right? Like having to escape from where you came from, having to to like just move forward, don't look back. And as and I do understand that, but I also um, I don't see it as as a as escaping and and like kind kind of having like this new life, but as a whatever I end up doing that I, I don't forget like where I came from. I don't forget about the people that have helped me that have like given me so much, um, so much and have like new experiences and opportunities. Um, so I, you know, I can only, I take everything like day by day and all I hope is that whatever happens in the future that um, I'm able to, to give back to the people that have helped me and that, you know, I make them proud. Good. Yeah, there is there is this kind of overlying notion that um, that leaving doesn't that I guess leaving doesn't always have to mean escapism, right? Or or um, running away. It's just you know a choice sometimes, um, and sometimes it's not a choice also too. So I guess it really is dependent on um, a personal experience.
but good. It's nice to know that you guys actually care about giving back, right? Because then that way you can offer opportunities to people who were once either in your position, you know, or um, experiencing something different. Um, so next question. Do you think there is a strong correlation between social integration, whether that means having a strong knit group of friends or peers that are first generation or not, um, that you connect with here on campus, whether that means being part of a club or an organization or an honor society, something like that, an academic group. Do you think that that has a strong influence on your academic success? Absolutely. I think that um, it's important to be surrounded by people who are like you, who have had um, similar experiences, who are kind of like around um, maybe even like choosing the same career path or the same major. I feel like it's really important to be surrounded by people who can give you advice and can kind of like relieve the anxiety because there's already like so much, um, so much pressure, so much confusion. Um, be, like, you know, being around people who are like you is, is super important. Would you guys agree with that? Um, really or offer like a different perspective on it? Yes, I mean, for me, the reason why I've always said why I love Miami so much is because I've met people from literally all around the world that I, like I get surprised you know because it's amazing how much in one organization like so many countries can come together and I'm super involved that's one of the reasons I love FIU so much because they give us so many organizations that we can be part of mm -hmm. and I believe that apart from um, just like the professional side of networking the support system that you get from these people is amazing and it's a uh, social uh, yeah social support that I don't think you can compare it to like family support or other friend support because the people that are in that organization and studying with you actually know what you're experiencing because they're mm -hmm. also living it so yeah for me I wouldn't be anything or I would probably like have gone back to Peru by now if I wouldn't have had the support that I have from my peers true true cool Andres so yeah, there's a lot of social pressures being a first generation, like you try to fit in, like, am I doing this correctly? What can I do better? Like, you're always like, I can say for myself, I'm always questioning myself, like, am I doing this for the better good? Can this be done better? But um, like being involved on campus has shown me like there's individuals that are just like you, um, you get to learn so much. There's a lot of cultures within FIU. So I think you're always learning and it's something that will never stop because um, I've met individuals that say, hey, you want to go here? And then here I go, I go with them. So I think you're always meeting someone new and it's a way to like connect, grow and network. So yeah, I would agree with what Amadi said and what Claudia said. Cool, you guys have all mentioned that FIU, of course, you know, given in the name, it's an international university, or university that of course um, embraces diversity, right? Um, so as a first gen student of an international university, um, how do you think your college experience varies from other students or what would you say are the pros and cons of, of being a part of a university that uh, embraces diversity or being international in general? I mean, for me, it was more of like, I didn't have anyone to guide me um, while I knew other of my friends were like, like their parents came also to FIU or they also had like college experience. So for me, like the only downside of it was that I didn't have that relationship or I didn't really know what to do when I got here. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of, you know, getting to know more people that would tell me about this stuff, but I mean, it was not really that hard, but it was definitely a difference that I noticed as soon as I got here. Mm -hmm. Andres or Maris, you guys can, you know. I can go. Um, so I would say um, there's um, personal development 
and actually you can hone your language skills because you meet um, a whole bunch of different people like you. I personally think my Spanish is perfect, but then I go up to someone, speak Spanish, and it's like broken. So that's like an opportunity <laughs> to instantly practice and like better myself. So I think um, it's great to be a part of like this college within because I'm always learning something new, like I mentioned before. And I personally get to meet new people, take in new cultures that I would never have expected to. Cool. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, being part of a university that embraces um, like inclusivity and equality is like super important. Um, I wouldn't want to be somewhere where I'm considered like the token Latinx person, you know, like uh, even like in the book, um, I mentioned the book, uh, right? She did talks about being like the only Latina in an art class. And, you know, I can't even imagine having to, you know, like trying to be a part of this world that is very white um, in a country that's really white and having to kind of like sell yourself in that way, like, you know, like prove yourself and then also like prove your struggles. And, you know, um, it's like, nice being somewhere where people understand that uh, we all kind of like come from from a different place mm -hmm. um, and it's like it's it's great having uh, that warmth I guess. Yeah I think also what contributes um, I guess to that that positive experience when you're um, kind of going through this with others that uh, share commonalities right um, is that you're also paying attention to preserving like your cultural identity while being either in a new place, right? Or um, recognizing that you have an experience that's different from somebody else's, right? And that goes to, um, to say with like, for example, like I, I'm not first generation um, because my mother uh, went to MDC, but um, you know, she was from Cuba. Like she came from Cuba when she was three years old. I'm like one of those classic cases of you know, my parents came right when the revolution started um, and you have this idea of being like Americanized, right? Which we don't even know what that really means. And so I grew up feeling a little bit far removed from my Cuban heritage. And now as I'm getting older, trying to, to hold on to that, right? And so like, I don't experience a lot of, um, I guess like the challenges, right? That maybe others um, who, I guess weren't raised that way, even though we're both Cuban, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so it's, it's just an interesting thing to consider when you're thinking of identity, especially in the context of a university um, setting or as a college student. So um, thank you guys for sharing so far. And I also appreciate um, everyone for tuning in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you how your zines are going before we continue with our final questions. <laughs> uh, so I have like a mixture of some photographs I've taken on my um, analog camera. So awesome. um, I love food. I love cooking. And um, so here are some tacos. <laughs> here are um, some avocados. Um, and I'm still working in the middle. But I am using some of my photos as well as some magazines. So. Cool, cool. That is so cute, Amaris. And I love tacos too. <laughs> so for me, um, I got this magazine, which is like from furniture stuff. So I tried to work uh, with this and it's called My Second Home. Um, so it's first like a, from Peru to like Miami that, you know, this like the beaches and the city and then I'm still working on this one, but it's me feeling super lost because I didn't, like I had all these expectations of it being like a dream, but you know, it's much harder than that. And then reminding myself of my purpose and why I came here. So focusing more on my studies instead of like fitting in with the lifestyle. And then I'm still working on this, but then like, you know, meeting friends that are like family, meeting special people. And then, um, oh, the opportunities all the opportunities that I could have. And I'm still working on the side, but it's like a graduation gown of like when I finally made it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Narrative, yes. <laughs> we cool. love storytelling. 
I'm working on mine. So what I'm doing is basically adding different aspects of my life with culture. So I have a skull, I have my family, I have like a piñata. So I'm doing like different things per page. That's awesome. I'm doing um, the skull for the other Los Muertos, which is coming up. So I'm taking it step by step. This is the first time doing it. So it's, I think it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it takes a lot of um, time and thinking to be even just looking through images to see what you want, right? and then see how it fits. But the good thing is, it's just, it's an easy way of making yeah. art, of being mindful, right? A lot of the times we can be so overwhelmed and super stressed with, you know, all of the distractions of our daily lives. And uh, sometimes it's just good to take a second and, and just, you know, engage in something creative. Cool. So um, how do you all feel about having gone into a semester that is mostly virtual? It's hard. It's hard, um, especially because I am an art student too. I have a lot. I mean, since I'm also doing like art history and religious studies, like that's easier because it's like a lot of reading, a lot of lectures, and that's that's that can be like done online. Like I don't have a problem with that, but uh, it's 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 really interesting having to work on things at home, especially having my parents look at my art. It's uh, they, I usually show them things. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't like keep it away, but they kind of see like the process and some, like yesterday I covered the entire bathroom tub with clay <laughs> because I was supposed to I'm like, I like literally covered it up um, for a project. And my dad, he walked in and he was just like, I've never seen him like this. He was like mouth the gap, like like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, oh, I'm just doing an art piece. And he was like, of course, you know, like <laughs> this, this, like, you know, why, why can't I be painting? I yeah. just have to cover this up. But yeah, it's hard. Um, it's hard, but you know, things that we have to get through. And... So in my case, uh, I would say it's been pretty difficult. So. I've actually had to balance a job and doing school. Um, I decided to take five classes. I don't know why. Um, I thought it would be easier, but it wasn't. Oh my gosh, and online, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it would be easier since we're online, but I think like the workload has been even more. But I've been able to adapt. I mean, I meet all the deadlines. I have my I started a new position as a communications manager. So I think um, I'm taking it all in, like learning something new every single day. Although I do sleep late, but I mean, I have to do what I have to do at the end of the day to get everything. Yeah. Make some. So I'm not complaining. So it's it's been hard to adapt, but I mean, we're living in a new era, new times. So I think. Adapt, adapting to everything new situations is like required at the end of the day yeah it's just becoming second nature at this point right mm -hmm. yeah yeah for me it was hard at the beginning because my family is obviously in peru and just the quarantine in itself i was i all the communication i could have with them was through you know these like zoom or facebook or whatever um but school actually I like it. I don't know, like it's hard, but I like it because um, like Andres, I apply to a lot of opportunities that I, I probably wouldn't have applied if it was in person. Mm -hmm. um, but now I have three internships going on and five classes. So I'm like, you know, managing everything. I have meetings all day and I also sleep late, but I wouldn't be able to do it if it was in person because they will require me to go to the office and to, you know, different rooms. And now I can literally log off from, you know, when this finishes and hop on to my next meeting without literally leaving my desk. So I like that aspect. Yeah, so it just, it kind of like opened the door. That's that's another thing about this whole entire year, right? This entire pandemic, the, um, it's just, it's opened a lot of possibilities for people despite, you know, uh, even though people have lost jobs, you know, we've, we've had to either find more work, right? Or, uh, essentially have responsibilities that we didn't have before um, sometimes there could be like a blessing in disguise right um, within uh, this process so cool cool um, lastly um, what are you most looking forward to um, before you guys graduate or before you all graduate 
I just want to take advantage of all the opportunities I have right now and to keep bonding with my peers like in the organizations and keep just experiencing everything and taking it all in. Because I was talking about this with one friend like last week. We always think there's more time, but you know, after high school there's college and after college, like that's it. And we are, I'm one year away of graduating and I'm already, you know, stressing about the future life. So what I'm trying to do is just focus on what I have right now, the opportunities I have right now, and take the most like advantage I can. All right, so Amaris, Andres, what are you guys uh, most looking forward to? Um, I'm just, I'm excited for just being able to say that I finished. You know, um, I know that we're living like in really strange times. So maybe the, the idea that I had of, of graduation is gonna be a bit different, especially cause I'm graduating this, um, this semester. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm very fearful, <laughs> but I'm also excited, you know, just like uh, Claudia was mentioning, like uh, she's already like stressing about it. I'm very much stressing about it, <laughs> but um, definitely taking advantage of the opportunities and um, enjoying this because these are all going to be memories soon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and definitely recognizing that what you all are doing, just, you know, the simple act of going to school is already a huge achievement, right? So although it, it can be stressful, just always, you know, keep that in the back of your mind to help you, you know, push forward. So I literally, I've never thought about this, like literally <laughs> I get asked this, but I would have to say like overall, giving my parents that diploma in their hands and saying, look, you guys did it. I did it. Um, like, look what we accomplished. So uh, besides that, I would just say living in the moment, like meeting new people, mm -hmm. exploring different places and enjoying day by day, like not to rush. I know. Yeah. I would have to apply to jobs, but taking it day by day and just living in the moment i would say cool yeah being you know being in the present moment is always good advice right mm -hmm. uh somebody once told me that if you're thinking about the past or thinking about the future then it's out of fear because if you think about this exact moment right now we're all safe we're all good you know um we're all feeling calm you know and currently in you know doing this activity everything's good in the moment right so there's no need to focus on things like fear or worry, um, just always pushing forward. Cool. So I'd like to actually um, share what I've been working on. Uh, I found some cool text. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my title's called El Sueño, right? In the style of my own Loteria card inspired by the exhibition Otros Lados, um, which again is on view. So you can check out that virtual exhibition link on the chat or um, come and visit, right? Uh, you can make an appointment, or if you're an FIU student or a faculty member, you can come on by. We're open Wednesdays through Saturdays. So I have here, build the dream, el poder, right? And I also have the journey is just beginning. I can fear nothing. And then uh, finally, I have show where you are going without forgetting where you are from, which I thought, you know, I saw that and I was like, cool, this is um, absolutely relevant. Now, um, within our final minutes of uh, today's program, I'd like to open it up to uh, the attendees, right, to um, make any comments on uh, the Q&A portion of the Zoom call or actually ask questions to our panelists. So if anybody would like to ask a question or make a comment, you're more than welcome to do so. I would like to thank you, Andres, Claudia, and Amaris for participating in today's zine workshop. I really enjoyed um, discussing, you know, your experiences and your thoughts um, with you all today. Uh, do you have any questions for me before I guess we, you know, close today's program? Or final comments? Maybe pieces of advice to anybody that might be in your shoes, um, you know, attending this call today. Definitely um, ask for help when you need it um, and to not be afraid of 
of looking for for resources and opportunities and don't um don't think too much about applying for things i'm i'm really glad i i'm really glad i even started being like i started as an intern with you at the frost i oh, definitely so i definitely um was like oh this is an amazing opportunity i need to try i want to do this i've always wanted to intern at a museum and i definitely didn't think it would um like it would have worked out and it did so i'm happy that i did that you know um and well, i'm I, very grateful you know to have you as well so <laughs> well what, what were you gonna say what was your final thought oh um also uh you know like we're always scared about money and rightfully so if there's like you know always look for for uh scholarships that have to do with like if you're a first gen student um to definitely do that i know like fiu has some and uh luckily i was able to find one you know and it was just just like that first gen um and i didn't think i would i would get it and i did so it's also you know just like pushing yourself to to apply even if you don't think that you're gonna get it you know exactly just to take the risk we actually have two questions that are pretty related so i want to um uh, mention that we have a question from jennifer rivera how did your culture inspire you and then we also have a question from t reese where do you find your source of inspiration and how do you stay motivated so either of you are welcome to answer uh, the questions from uh, those attendees. Thank you guys so much for interacting. This is awesome. Um, I guess I can go. So um, my culture is like definitely influences my art and everything I produce very heavily. Um, like my zine, I named it um, Tortillas y Platanos because <laughs> I'm half Nicaragüense. So like they eat tortillas and then my dad eats platanos because he's Puerto Rican. Um, and that's how, kind of how my sisters and I like call each other this like weird mix. So I'm influenced by by what happens in between like these four walls of my home, my parents, my sisters, uh, my family back at home, the food that we eat, uh, everything, the good and the bad, like everything influences uh, like the work that I do at least. Um, I can answer the next question. Um, my source of inspiration is definitely the people that I love. And as I mentioned, all the friends and all the support system that I have. Um, Jenny, actually, the, the one that made the first um, question is part of the PCA board with me. And even though we meet um, virtually because everything started when the pandemic was going on, the support system I feel from all of them is definitely something that keeps me motivated and keeps me going. Great. Andres, do you have any um, final thoughts or? So for the second one, where do you find your source of inspiration? I would say my support system. So I have a group of friends and family that if I do something, if I don't do it, like they'll always be pushing me and saying, congrats. Like they'll always be there. Like there's always people like I count on, like I just don't go to them for my problems. Like literally it can be the littlest thing. They come to me. So I think it's always keeping the balance of them coming to you. I go to them, like whether it be good or bad. So, and I've been able to stay motivated. Oh, sorry about that. There's planes flying by, but um, as for um, how do I stay motivated? I think it would have to be my community. So that's literally something that always pushes me. Um, I've been able to see it grow like within, like I've seen the community grow. That's something that I've, always push myself like, hey, you can always better this by doing this and that. So I think that's something that will always be there, like always impacting me. Like even if I go away, I know I'll definitely be coming back and probably serve either as like a school board member or something related that I know I can make an impact for. Yeah, definitely. It definitely seems that um, keeping your relationship strong and being a part um, of a community, right, that you can identify with is really important in this process and i think that goes with anything in life right not just you know when it comes to cultural identity but anywhere you go or you know any of the relationships that you make or the decisions that you end up taking uh, that should definitely be kept in mind right so awesome uh thank you so so much 
for uh, participating in our zine workshop and for supporting the Frost Art Museum. Uh, I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your semester and just know the Frost Art Museum FIU is here for you and um, you can always come on by whenever you like. So thank you guys so much and um, you're free to go. <laughs> Bye. You have a good one. Have a good one.